Good afternoon. Um, we are going to, to see a talk about the Rails boot process. And I, will, I would like to explain before the goals of this talk. So uh, in this talk, we are going to see um, a few things related to this, to this topic. For instance, if you open the config directory, there are a number of files that we normally never touch that are generated, like this config boot RV, config environment RV. And uh, so we are going to see what, what they do, OK? Then uh, race components, in general, uh, um, can work independently of Rails. So active support, active support, for instance, is a library that you, you know you can use in a Ruby script, you know, that is not running inside the Rails application. Also, for instance, you can use active record uh, outside Rails. Okay? You, you can have like a regular Ruby script uh, using active record connecting to the database, everything. You know, you have everything. But somehow, magically, uh, uh, you know, you launch a Rails application and all these independent components are, you know, somehow are organized for you and seamlessly you use them, you know, and there's nothing, there's nothing that the programmer has to do to get these things working together. And we are going to, to see how that works. And, you know, the, 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 final, the final goal is to understand more or less what happens when, okay? I say more or less because there's a lot happening, but we are going to have a good sense of what uh, happens when. And for this talk, we are going to have uh, to take into account a few things. First, um, the approach of the talk is thought for Rails programmers, all right? So for instance, it's not going to be like a, a, you know, a walkthrough of, you know, of code and code and code and see the room path of, of this thing. So we are going to see code, but it's not a walkthrough. So uh, with this talk, I have, I have tried to uh, explain what I would like to know as a Rails programmer about the, the root process, the boot process, okay? And it, it is something that I would like an, an init guide to, to cover, you know, that kind of information. Um, in the boot process, we have rail ties and we have engines, but this is not a talk about rail ties and engines. We are going to see what they are. But that's, that's a, a topic for, for a whole talk, okay? So we are going to see only what is needed for this talk about rail ties and engines. Therefore, uh, we are going to see some code snippets, but they are going to be like heavily, heavily edited. So I, I have not tried, even tried it, that, that you understand, so that the, the slides makes clear this has been edited. You, you know, with, ellipse, with ellipses or something like that. We put like a big warning, and in general, the code we are going to see, if you open the real file, is going to have more stuff, okay? But there's a lot going on, and I tried to select and, you know, and cut everything out that was, was not relevant to the, to the topic we are talking about. And finally, we are going to ignore Spring, you know, so the boot process, assuming that, no, 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 no. <laughs> This is the boot process, you know, uh, the, the vanilla thing, okay, without, without uh, additions. All right. So, uh, normally when, when, you, when you think about booting Rails, you, you, you have a, a server in mind, okay? You, you, you launch the application, you, you launch the server, you, can, you are able to, to serve requests and everything. But uh, there are more things that, that boot Rails. So, for instance, if you run the console, you know that somehow you have everything in the application available in the console, right? Also, runner. If you run, um, you know, if you pass runner a string or, or a file name, it gets executed in the context of the application. So somehow the application has been boot for, you know, in order to run these commands. Uh, runner indeed is a command that I love. I, I believe I, I, I run this command every day. So, um, 
it allows you to run something quickly instead of launching the console and then control D and that kind of thing. You just you know run or something, and indeed to understand the Rails the the, the Rails uh, initialization, uh, runner one which is execute the program that has a literal one. You know it's something that I do often. You know so that's the minimum thing the, the minimum thing uh, Rails runner one the, the minimum thing that you know loads what it has to load does what it has to do, and then there's no more side effects, except evaluating one, which is not a lot. And also, uh, in some RAID tasks, you know that you have also the, the environment load. So booting the, the application means being ready to serve all these kind of things. All right, so let's open bin rails, okay? This is a file that is generated by in any, um, at least modern uh, Rails application. And we have here config boot, we load config book, uh, boot, and then uh, it doesn't require something, okay? If you open bin rake, you will see that it loads config boot and then does stuff related to rake, okay? So these both, uh, th these both files start loading config boot. That's the first thing. And if you open config boot, you will see that it's basically doing bundle setup, okay? Bundle setup uh, uh, configures the load paths so the application is able to require the gems that are in the gem file with, the, you know, with all the constraints and everything and is not able to load gems that are outside that thing, okay? So, Bundler setup tweaks load path and I don't know, the, the all, all, all is needed so that that is going to work. Then if you open config rule, which is what you execute when you launch a, a server, you will see that it um, requires config environment, okay? And then does something. Config environment is another important, important file. It loads application, and this is config application RV, which is the first file we normally, you know, at, at, uh, working as a programmer, that's, the, the, that's like a, kind of the first thing, you know? Config application RV is where stuff uh, starts, where you can config, I don't know, time zone, that kind of stuff, okay? So that's the file that is being referenced here. And then, very important, it runs Rails application initialize. And this is the magic. So. Initialize, this, this uh, method is the one that runs all the initializations. Up to now, we are like setting things up, you know, to, to be able to do this. And this is config application RB, which loads Rails all and then executes bundle require with the groups that are relevant to that, to that uh, execution, okay? So, Rails all, we are not going to see, we are going to see Rails all later. Okay, forget about it for a moment. But the point here is that we are doing bundle require. At this point is when the, the gem dependencies are loaded, okay, unless you opt out, okay, at this point. And after that, we evaluate the class that defines the application itself, which is, you know, this thing uh, that is named after, you know, what you pass to the new command, that kind of thing. Okay, so the, the um, presentation is, is organized in a, few, in a few blocks. And uh, we are going, it's going to be like a bit like a, a roller coaster, okay? So we are going to dive a little bit in something and then a little bit up doing some summaries, okay? So, uh, this is the summary of what we have uh, seen up to this point. So define load paths. We have the gems dependencies ready. Then load rails all, which is something that is going to be seen um, later. Then we actually load the dependencies, define application class, run initialize. That's like the, the script no, that's the, the order in which things run in, in, at, at this point. And at, it's initialize that does, you know, 
the proper Rails boot process, okay? All right, Rails rail type. So um, Rails rail type is a, is a class that provides a number of things so that extensions and, you know, are able to hook into this process. For instance, it provides hooks to run code when you launch a console, when you launch the runner command, you know? So you can say, as a, as a, as a gem, you can say, hey, if, if I am loaded in a Rails application and the console is launched, please call this code, okay? And we, we, we may have like, you know, a series of, of blocks like, the, like this that are scheduled to run at that, at that point. Then you have the ability to define custom conf configuration points, okay? So when you see like, for instance, config dot uh, something, config dot active record dot something, you know? Uh, uh, a rail type, we are going to see later that active record is a rail type, allows you to define configuration points so that applications are able to, you know, to express the configuration they want. And also, very important, they have the ability to declare code to be executed during boot. Uh, during, during boot. So th these are called initializers. Okay? So uh, hooks, configuration points, and the ability to declare. So uh, Railtors can declare that I want to run something when the initialization happens, which is something I don't know, okay? Rail types are defined by subclassing uh, this class, this very class, and Rails knows uh, which rail types are defined because there's an inherited hook, you know, that when Rails rail type is subclassed, there's an inherited hook that say, hey, I have been subclassed, and that by definition is a rail type, okay? Well, there's a technical thing about some special subclasses that I ignored, but that's the idea. So let's see an example, okay? So this is, for instance, uh, a rail type of factory girl. And this initializer thing with, with a block is uh, factory girl is declaring. When the application is initialized, and I, I don't know what, when that is, you know, but when, when it happens, you've got to run, to, to run this code. So for instance, the uh, factory girl at this point knows that Rails root is already defined. Okay, that's, that's a contract. You, you know you can, you can assume that, okay? And in this case, factory girl is setting up some uh, factory paths or something like that, okay? So the way factory girl, so factory girl needs to define some paths that depend on the Rails application, and the way to do that in an integrated way with Rails is to define a rail type and say, okay, when you are booting, uh, call me and I will, I, I will configure myself, all right? So Rails components are integrated into the framework using rail ties. For instance, this is the rail tie of Active Record. Active Record defines a rail type to integrate into the framework. In this case, for instance, this is an example. This is one of this is the hook that tells uh, uh, Rails to run this code if the console is launched. Okay, so. If the, con if the console is launched, if it's, if it's launched in sandbox mode, which is a mode that starts a transaction and rollbacks the transaction when the console, when the session is over, okay? Load some code I have not copied here, okay? Load whatever you need to support this thing. And for instance, then you have, you know that, that recently the, in the console you get, uh, you get the SQL logits in, you know, there. So there's code that says, okay, unlock to standard error, right? So that's the way uh, Active Record integrates into Rails by defining a rail type that does this and, and does a lot of other things, all right? Okay, for instance, this is from Action Dispatch. And we are seeing here an example of configuration. We saw before an example of hooking into the console. Now we see an example with configuration. So for instance, this is the way Action Dispatch defines a configuration point called TLD underscore length, and it gives this uh, configuration point a default, which is one, okay?
This is from active support. The, and this is another initializer. We, we saw an initializer for, for factory girl. We are now seeing an initializer for active support. And uh, we do not need to understand this code, but it's basically taking the time zone that the application has configured and setting, you know, whatever active support needs to set up to, uh, to take into account that configuration point. Okay, so that's what Rails all does. Rails all is just, uh, you know, it just loads all the, the rail ties of uh, the different components in Rails. So, application RB loads this file. This file is just, it's just looping and loads everything, all right? And as a side effect of loading these things, we have first that Rails knows that uh, rail tie has been subclassed. So uh, we are able to list the rail, the rail ties that have been loaded. And also as a side effect of loading this, we have the configuration points, the declarations of the initializer. So it's like a setup, okay? And that's the way the components work seamlessly in a Rails application. So the application uh, in, re uh, in reality, well, as a rule of thumb, as, uh, let's, let's say, maybe it's not 10%, you know, in all cases, but as a rule of thumb, uh, this is, this is, I don't know, I, I like very much th this design. So Rails does n is not coupled to the, to the components. Rails is kind of agnostic to most of them, all right? So Rails does not have in the initialization process anything that, uh, you know, that hard codes the stuff, uh, you know, to, to integrate the components. No, 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 it, it goes the other way around. So the rail ties are, uh, you know, loaded, and the configuration points are the interface between rails and these components, okay? So the active record just loads and say, hey, call me the console, uh, please run this initializer, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and the same for the thing th for, for the for the for the rest of of, um, of Rails components. And are the rail ties so are the components that know that they are living in a parent application. Okay, that's the way they integrate. So Rails does not hard code in general anything about active record that kind of thing. Rails just exposes a number of configuration points, active record loads takes the configuration points that, that it needs to set up its, itself, and you know, you are, you are set, okay? That's the idea. So a vanilla Rails application has 15 rail ties, which are these ones, okay? So you see, uh, uh, everyone that's, that needs to integrate with all this process has to define a rail tie. All right. Next block, lazy loading. So in general, so example of heavily edited code, this, 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 this is active record RB, which has a lot of things, okay? <laughs> All right, so in general, if you, if you open like, like the root file of the Rails components, you will see a lot of auto loads like this one, okay? This is the auto load of Ruby, well, uh, yeah, so, so Rails redefines because auto load in Ruby needs, uh, you know, the constant and then it needs a path, all right? But when you follow naming conventions for the files and you write this thing three times, so the, the, the reaction is to write something that automates this using the convention. So, so modulus that, this is, the, this is the Ruby auto load, not the Rails auto load of constants, okay? So in general, when you boot, Rails tries to be as lazy as possible loading things so, so you have the, you know, the minimum things to do when you boot. One of them is, is setting auto loads for, you know, this is the active record is the, the namespace. So active record base, active record, I don't know, whatever, is going to be auto load. So it's not going to be active record base, it's not going to be required on boot. It's going to be required when it's needed, you know? And that's thanks to auto load. So since things are going to be loaded only when needed, 
And there's code that needs to know, hey, have you load already active record? For instance, to include something in active record base or whatever. Uh, there's this, this utility which, which is active support on load. So for instance, in the active record rail tie, we have, to, we have to set up the logger of active record. And the initializer does not go in a straight away, you know, assign the logger. Because the, you know, the way to do this orderly is you, you declare that when active record is load, then please set the, the logger with, you know, the block that I am passing here. Okay, so that's the way, you know, to defer as much as possible things in order to have as a, a, a boot process as lightweight as possible. And at the end of active record base, at the end of active record base, which is what active record considers to be, uh, you know, loading active record, you know, by definition is uh, evaluating this file. It says room load hooks for active record. Okay, so when this file is evaluated, all the you know the class is defined, and at the bottom of the file you have this line, and then everything that was you know scheduled to be run when active record loads is going to be is going to be run at this point. Okay, next block is Rails uh, engine. Rails engine is a subclass of, of rail ties, okay, of range rail time. They are defined as well, so rail ties were defined by subclassing rails rail tie, and engines are defined by subclassing rails engine. So it's the same, the same kind of thing, okay? And what is an engine? So this, this would be like one, two, three talks, but just, you know, so just to get the idea of what it is, First, it inherits everything from Rails rail tie. So all, we, all we, we, we saw before about console, runner, you know, hooks, initializers, config points, that's all available here. But it's like a, a superset. You, you can do more things with an engine. So for instance, you can, you know, you, you can define controllers, models, that kind of thing. You have uh, initializers as well, assets, you know, a, a bunch of things. So it's, it's closer to like, uh, you know, unless you are able to define like a subset of an application, that, that's the idea for an engine, okay? Um, so engines have predefined some configuration points and also some initializers, all right? So just by subclassing engine, you got some configuration and some initializers uh, for starters. So this is the, the one that are inherited. So when you define an engine subclassing Rails in, uh, engine, you get this kind of thing. So uh, you're going to set the load path of the engine, okay? So um, adding your own lib directory or whatever, you know, to, to app, app models, whatever, to the load path that is already set. Auto load path, routing paths, locales, a number of things, okay? So it's, it is not important to, to follow every single step of this, you know, it's maybe too detailed, but just, you know, to give an idea of the kind of things that, that you inherit from an, from an engine, uh, view paths, uh, load environment config is, uh, the, this, these are initializers, this is, this is the initializer uh, that runs whatever you have in config environments, development RB, config environments, production RB, whatever. And then some other paths, um, then you load config initializers, all right, this order. And then there's a technical hook, engines, black point, that says uh, you've, at this point you have already run a number of things and if you are interested in hooking into this, you can, all right? So initializers by default go like in chain, but you can say uh, this has to run before this other initializer or this has to run after that one and there are a number of technical points uh, in order to, to be able to do that. And a vanilla Rails application, which is like Rails new, you know, what, what, what do we get with Rails new? There are four engines, these this four, okay? Okay, 
Action cable is an engine, uh, it has an engine, so the rest of rail components have rail ties because with a rail tie it's, it's enough what they have to do on boot. And actual cable has some assets and that's the, that's the reason it, it is an engine. All right, and we, we are arriving to rail application, which is a subclass of engine. So, so look at this hierarchy. So the base thing is a rail tie, then we have an engine, and an application is a subclass of engines. So, you know, the application is like a particular case of all this design. Okay, beautiful, I think it's beautiful. All right. So they are defined by subclassing and that, that's what you do in config uh, application RB. If you remember, you have your application subclassing race application. That's exactly what that file is doing. So uh, the application is a, it indeed is a singleton, you know, there, there's, one, there's just one instance of that class and you can access that instance uh, using rails.application, which is a method. And when the singleton is instantiated, you, you get a hook, call it before con configuration. That's uh, also just something that is fired and if you, in a, in a rail type, for instance, you say uh, config dot before configuration, uh, execute something, is going to be executed at this point, which is just when the application is just, you know, you inst it, it got in instantiated, you get this code call. Okay, so application execute four groups of initializers, four groups. It's organized this way. First, you have the ones inherited from Rails engine, okay? Rails engine have some pre-configured pre ones, so those ones you inherit, therefore, they are going to be executed. Then, there's a bootstrap group that does like super basic things like setting up paths and that kind of thing. Then we have the initializers of all the rail ties and engines that the application has load, okay? And the way this is load is because we have a bundle required in config application. So if you have an, an extension, a gem or something implementing a, a, a rail tie or an engine, so what happens is that when bundler require loads that gem, that gem, you know, at that point defines the rail tie or the engine so that is, you know, so that the application knows about the existence of this, of this thing. And then there's a finishes group that does, you know, some, some uh, trailing stuff. So the booster uh, group, for instance, uh, the first one uh, is, a, is a technical hook as well. Um, then, for instance, we load active support. So active support, that's, that's not something optional. Uh, all, you know, the whole race uses active support, okay? So straight away, you, that, that this one is, is hard code, this one is loaded. Okay, um, yeah, so this loads active support all, which brings you everything in active support, unless there's a configuration point, which is config active support bare, uh, which says, instead of loading everything, just load whatever the application, I mean, wh whatever Rails needs, you know, to, to run. And this light means that we are finishing? No? All right, I saw a change. Okay, okay, fine. Um, yeah, so uh, you are able to, to uh, load as, you know, the minimum uh, of active support, okay? That said, I have never seen this, this one used, so, but uh, we have it there. Then eager load, um, you initialize the, the logger, this is the bootstrap log, uh, the bootstrap group, okay? So you initialize the logger, the, the cache, uh, the, the way constant autoloading loads things, which can be load or require depending on, depending on the environment or the configuration, and then there's a before initialized hook, the details, too, too much details, okay? There are a number of things that are going on, just uh, having a look. And then rail ties and engines in a vanilla uh, Rails application have 94 initializers declared, okay? It's too much. So 
then we have the finisher group, okay? These things, more or less, you, you can think that they run more or less in order, except that uh, the before and after uh, things that are, you know, when you declare an initialization, you can say before this and after this, you know, uh, unless you have de defined something, you can more or less think that they go in order, okay? So, yeah, a number of things. The finisher group does a number of things. Um, um, it configures lib templates in case generators uh, need uh, to load things from here. Um, yeah, this, this second one is technical. Um, then uh, this one is defining, you know, you know that you, if you go in development mode to Rails info, you get some, some pages there. And if you go to the home, you get the, this new shiny thing, you know, in Rails 5. So uh, the way that works, if, if you go to config roots RV, that's not in config roots RV. So how is that served, all right? So the roots are defined here. Those ones are defined here. Uh, you build the middleware stack at this point. So we are, we are kind of already late, you know, okay? We had, we, we, you have to think we are already, most of the things are done at this point. Um, well, in, 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 you define main app, which is something for engines, doesn't matter. To prepare blocks, important, these are blocks that are run in, you know, certain certain points of the runtime, and eager load is, is important. By default, in production, you eager load the application, and then there's a, a, another technical hook, which is the finisher hook, that fires another you know another event, which is after initialize in case you have to do something after this has run. All right, and uh, a number of things that are too detailed, maybe. Well, the second one loads the roots. This, this one is important, okay? But there are a number of things in this finisher group going on. Okay, so uh, when, once everything has been declared and we have everything load, you know, there's a topological sort going on here. So an initializer have an after, before, topological sort if someone does not know. Uh, basically, if you have things that have uh, uh, an order, a relative order um, declared, like I have to run at some point, but make sure it's before that thing, or I have to run at some point, but make sure it's after that other thing, okay? So a topological sort is, is getting this linear in a way that respects these relative constraints, okay? So if you said you, you need to run before that thing, you are guaranteed that you are going to run before that thing, okay? Uh, maybe not immediately before, it doesn't matter. So the constraint is rela uh, uh, relative, okay? So maybe not just before, maybe two before, I don't know, depends on, on the other things that have said that need to be run before that hook, okay? So that's the idea. In any case, we ordered initializers to be run the way they have declared to be run. So at, at this SHA-1, uh, we have 124 initializers. There's a lot going on, okay? Because everything, you know, this is designed so that everything that needs to happen at boot uh, is going to be generally happening in, a, in an initializer. So there's a lot of things, uh, 124, and I have listed all of them, so, so if you get then uh, a PDF or we, we, we see the video, uh, we have them at least, you know, as a reference. This is like, this is not like public interface. This is not, not something Rails is telling you. Uh, these are going to exist. You can, you know, you, know you, you can assume that all of these 124 are going to exist in, in, in other releases or something like that. So, you know, but anyway, just for the sake of the, of the, of the presentation, uh, these are the ones uh, I am just going to pass the slides because, you know, it's, there's no, no point in going one by one. But, you know, you see we have setting load paths here, then auto load paths, you know, and there are like, uh, all right. So, yeah, so when, what, what I want, what I want to, to, what I want to say here is just that you are aware that all of, the, all of these initializers are defined and all of these things are running, okay? Uh, 
Uh huh. All right. Okay. So we've seen like a number of things, and and there's there's too much to get like like what which is the the whole picture. So so uh, from all these, I've I've selected what I think uh, I would like to have clear as a race programmer. Okay. So you've seen there's a lot of things going on. So this is the summary of the summaries, like, like you know, the essential things that, uh, that we need to know. All right, summary of the summary. We go to the, to the beginning of the presentation, okay? With boot, RB, and that kind of thing. So first, we define the load paths, which is bundle setup. So we have the gems, you know, the ones that, that we want to be uh, available and not the ones we do not want to have available. Then we load the rail ties. And this as a side effect defines all these configuration points of this initializer, you know, active record, and all the rails components. After that, we load uh, the gem dependencies with bundle required. Then the, the, the application class itself is evaluated. Okay, the, the definition of the, of the application class itself is evaluated. And then there's a bunch of paths, like auto load paths, you know, load paths, stuff. All right. After that, and this is important, at this point, we load config environments, uh, development RB, production RB, whatever. Okay? And this is, why, this is why the configuration in these files takes precedence over the one in config application RB, simply because it runs after after it, okay? So if you say foo equals one in application RB, and since after that you run a, a config environments development RB, for instance, and you say foo equals two, so it's just, it, it takes precedent just because it's, you know, evaluated, you know, later, and that's the one that, that remains. After that, uh, the initializers in the application engines or whatever are run, okay? So first the application, then uh, the development RB, production RB, whatever. After that, config uh, initializers. These ones are uh, executed in lexicographic order. And after that, if needed, the application is eager loaded. That happens in production mode by default. Well, it, uh, another thing, so uh, yeah, parenthesis. So we've seen that rail ties integrate into rails via configuration points, all right? And in general, something curious as well is that in Rails, in general, in general, maybe if you do a grab, may, maybe you find a contract example. But in general, the Rails, the Rails code base is not full of if development question mark, if production question mark. No, no, no. The interface is uh, we have parameterized Rails using configuration points. Okay, and when you generate the, a new application. Development RB, test RB, production RB, whatever, sets, you know, sensible defaults for that environment. And then Rails just checks this configuration. All right? So it's not that in production uh, you do something. It's that in production by, you know, the, the default generated in production has a value that makes that happen. Okay? Right. So we run these ones, uh, eager load. We load the roots, and if we, if we were running a command, then the hooks of the command are root, okay? So this is like the, the most important se sequence of things that, that uh, we have to remember, all right? And that's it, all right, thank you.